Hey guys, Mike here. Welcome back to another video on the channel. I was hoping to get out here today and just get straight into spraying. Not that kind of spraying, but with the Raptor liner, the paint arrived, so I'm ready to paint this bumper now. And if you joined me in the last video, you would have seen me fabricate this bumper using my original tyre carrier, which was mounted underneath as kind of like a, a tow bar. And I've moved it up and sort of redesigned it a little bit and uh, got rid of about 25 kilos of unnecessary bumper, which is pretty good. So I'm really happy with it. Hopefully when it's painted, it will, it will look good and not completely shit, which is a possibility. But thanks to a comment from a subscriber, I've sorted out the recovery point, which is a two inch hitch receiver. And that obviously expands the capabilities of the bumper a bit more as well, which is great. I've also added a Zerk to the top of the hinge, so hopefully the brass bushings that are inside here can get greased up. One thing that really delayed me this morning was just trying to get this gas ram assist sorted out. And this is the system I've come up with. It looks a bit weird. Originally it was on the bottom here um, and there was just too much play. And on the original tire carrier, I had the same problem. Just eventually it wore out and there was too much play. So I'll kind of show you how it works. It basically assists you in opening it. It doesn't stick out too much, which is normally not a problem, but um, You've got like this off of an old tire chain. I had a, had a couple of spare ones. I've cut that down. It's not bolted up, obviously. I've got the strut there. And I've had to just notch out the strut to allow it to sit in this little bit here. And it's 50 kilo, so at the moment it feels crazy, like it's gonna fire it open. But when the tire's on, it's pretty smooth. I literally ran out of MIG wire just as I was putting it on. And uh, I really wanted to do like a bit of triangulation there just as an insurance policy, but it seems pretty damn strong. It doesn't look like it's gonna be going anywhere because it's quite a thick bit of tube. And this is just being pushed this way, which is kind of where it's gonna be its strongest. So it does well. I've just done a little bit of servicing on the mechanism as well. Just packed it full of jizz, just to make sure that it doesn't bind up. But I've been asked a number of questions about the mechanism and how does it work, and you can see it's just a cam um, with two bars that go to the top and the bottom. I mean, this thing has been a real problem for me since I first bought it and, and had to kind of put it together and had to weld and make these arms much stronger. But you can kind of see that you just have a handle and as you turn it, you're pulling the two bars inward like that. So the pin at the top and the pin at the bottom retract in. And that allows you to free up the locking mechanism on the tire carrier. Anyway, enough yammering, time to paint it. refresh it all a little bit so uh, it's all looking good there in the frame and stuff I personally think this might go wrong oh my god how is this even functioning oh shit in terms of prep on these parts I rarely leave metal without a keyed surface these days just just because of previous experiences. I've painted so many things on the Jeep now and, and sometimes I've had to revisit those things a few times just because I haven't put in that prep work. So you can see I've used an oscillating sander with 80 grit and then 120 I think. Just keyed this all up, taking away any sharp edges. I um, mean you know, if there's existing paint it's roughed up. I don't worry too much because it's wrapped a liner. You know so you don't see this kind of like onioning in the layers and things. It'll just all be gone. Um, but yeah, and, and then just clean it down and make sure it's free, free of grease. I'm using the Raptor Liner two-part epoxy primer. I've had really good experiences with that. I've done the gull wing windows, I've done the tube sliders, which I stand on all the time. You know, and sometimes I've got stains in my shoes and everything, and, and they've held up really well. And it's really just down to putting that mechanical key on the surface and spending a bit of time doing it. 
I've used etch primers and stuff from you, Paul, like Acid Etch, I think it was number seven or something on their product list. I've not had the best experience with not keying up a surface and relying on Acid Etch, just me personally. And there's probably loads of products out there, so don't quote me on this. I mean, I'm just giving you my personal experience, but I have had really good results with keying up, obviously, um, and uh, using the oscillating sander and using that uh, two-part epoxy primer and then applying the Raptor within a duration of time so you get that um, chemical um, adhesion between the two layers. So anyway, enough of that crap. I'm gonna spray this down. Let's get everything degreased. This is just brake cleaner. Probably not the best stuff you can use, but it's cheap. The surface is gonna be really dirty as well, which is, it's not too bad actually, but you're gonna kinda of wanna keep using clean rags and stuff until there's no dirt on this rag. And then you know it's ready for spraying. Been going over this bumper for, for a while now and uh, the rag is finally looking sort of as clean as it could look really going over the metal. Well, it's been about an hour and we're about ready to do some spraying with the old Raptor liner now. So spraying Raptor liner is really easy, to be honest with you. It's a very easy product to use. It basically does all the work itself, good coverage. You know, it's pretty forgiving. It makes really bad welds look good. You don't have to really worry about preparing surfaces in terms of like, like if you were gonna do a gloss finish, you, you need to be a pro. If you're gonna use Raptor liner, you could literally like hand the gun to a homeless man and go paint my car for me while I go get a Big Mac and he'll do it and he'll look good. So the thing really to bear in mind is um, what gun are you using? I'm using the U-Pole Schultz gun, this is like the standard Raptor gun. There is one with a variable nozzle. Um, a lot of people have told me I need to get that when they've seen my Raptor videos. I, I like the look of Raptor Liner without that kind of uniform textured finish. I quite like uh, that sort of globuly, sort of sporadic mess that, that you see on surfaces. I, I just like the look of it. I like that. Um, I think it looks good. So that's why I use this and I just use about 60, 65 PSI on the compressor to do it. So I think my compressor is 5 horsepower and it can maintain about 60 PSI continuously. So that's perfect really for doing kind of spraying like this. Pop that in there. Open up the Raptor, spill it everywhere. Imagine that, it must have happened. I don't know really whether there's any like specified techniques, maybe that. That's it. Ready to roll, baby. <laughs>
that's it. It's all done, really. Um, I've gone over them twice with this bottle, so I've done one coat. I waited about 30 minutes. I should have waited a bit longer, but it doesn't really matter. And I did another coat. So it's got two pretty decent coats and full coverage. So that's just one bottle. I only used one bottle. Um, there's about that much left in the bottom of this bottle. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, just wait for these to dry in about, touch dry in about an hour. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to use a headlamp and look at them. And if I see any areas where I've gone a bit light on the coverage, I'll just dab the brush in the bottle, touch up the areas, because there's always going to be places like that. Well, here we are. It's the next day. It's been about uh, 20 hours since I painted these. And although they were touch dry with about sort of five hours or so, I avoided touching them because the paint is still soft now. It's not hard yet. And it's going to take at least five days for it to fully harden, maybe even a week. So what they generally say is avoid moisture altogether within the first five days because it starts to go like a kind of weird gray color and it will just look terrible. So. This has come out really nice. It's actually a, a, an ideal coating, really, of Raptor liner. It's not too fine, and the texture is, is not too kind of matted. So with this kind of slightly glossed Raptor liner finish, which is what I always try and go for now, I've got a lot more experience with the product. Um, this makes it super easy to clean. If you kind of walk the gun too far back on, on the final coats, um, and, you, and you dust off, the Raptor liner to give it that matted look, that really matted look. What you'll do is you'll create a very matted surface and naturally there are more kind of pits and crevices for the dirt to get into and it's harder to clean. Whether it's like this, you can just wash this down with soap and all the, all the mud will come off of it. So I'd always recommend that. But let's put the bumper on. Normally on a Cherokee uh, bumper, all you really have is four bolts going into the back of the cross member. And the cross member's like two sheets of metal kind of spot welded together with you know a bit of framework and stuff. And, and you can crack the frame really easily if you build an extremely heavy bumper like this and you just bolt it on to this cross member and then you put 50 kilo tire on and then like let's say you put other camp gear on like water and fuel. You know, you're going to rack up sort of near 200 kilos just on four bolts going through two mil of sheet metal with a few nuts welded into it. And it's just going to crack and rip off. That's why I designed this with the tie-in brackets. So that you've got these eight bolts going into the cross member, but an additional 10 underneath going through what is about eight mil of steel into the, the bottom of the frame. Shut up.
It may be that this is your first episode of mine, and if it is, congratulations for making it this far. Um, but you might be thinking, what the hell is this plastic thing here? Well, I've done an episode on building these plastic wheel well liners front and back and in the centre portion as well with their aluminium. But the whole point is it's just really to evade rock rash. Um, I did clean down and used a sandblaster and also, you know, a lot of other things. I mean, the, fir the first three years of this vehicle's life, I think even, yeah, about the first three years was really just cutting out like it didn't have bad corrosion but but finding the corrosion that needed addressing cutting it out putting new metal in blasting it angle grinders with wire wheels cleaning it all back underneath you know zinc high corrosion primers and stuff and then you know putting on like a dynatrol um it's called underheads mass um in swedish so you know, you can get a lot of different brands. It's basically just undercoat. I like Dynatrol. But I also quite like the stuff you just get from Okakiota, which is Koro Protect. I mean, this, this is all right too. I use that just to, you know, touch up areas and things. And as, much, as brilliant as it is of, of preventing corrosion, um, it's only going to be able to take so much rock rash. You know, when you're driving the forest roads and you're driving like four or five hours in a day, you know, and gravel, blah, 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 just flying up everywhere, just blowing the crap out of all your paint. Um, you know, the the underheads mass, the undercoat's not going to survive. And so a hard barrier like plastic is clearly a no-brainer. And, and the reason I put these little spaces is just so water doesn't get trapped between surfaces and it can drain away. I've banged on about this for years. And it makes a massive difference, like having, having areas that are sort of slightly separated, you know, it allows you to get the jet wash in, water can drain away, you know, gravel doesn't get sandwiched between and like vibrate and sort of get rid of the paint. And it's just little things like that that really make all the difference in a vehicle's life. But anyway, um, I'm just cutting these down and shaping them because, you know, now I've got a different bumper design. I wish I'd left that longer. And you know it could it could have just gone all the way back there and, and stopped mud because what will happen is the gravel and the mud are going to go up there and they're going to come out the top there of the light and um, it's just not going to be great you know some people don't really give a shit about stuff like that for me I like prevention over cure I'm all about sort of making the vehicle as easy to maintain as, and clean as possible why did you buy a Jeep then Mike well. Well, that's it, it's all done. It's all done, paint's looking good and uh, in a few days that'll be a little bit less glossy, a little bit more matted and a bit harder to touch because at the moment you can dig your nail in and just tear it off. But I've tidied up the edges as well, so I've got that splash plate put in place now and I've put some extra plastic in just to kind of stop all the mud and stuff kicking up there and getting to places I don't want it to go. And other than that, it's a wrap, you know. I'd love to have driven the vehicle out and get the tire on and do all that kind of end of video bullshit with all the photos like oh yeah you know but the reality is I can't do that you can hear it's raining maybe uh, and it is raining pretty hard and the last thing you want is water on this literally over the next few days so over the weekend which is really a shame because we wanted to go camping as soon as possible but we can't this needs to stay put but thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I'll see you again in another one take care